Now, hi everyone, Physics Ninja here. Today I want to look at RL circuits, and I want to look at RL circuits in two limiting cases. Uh, one case, when you first close the switch, uh, what happens, what's the current in each branch of any RL circuit, doesn't matter which one, I drew one uh, particularly complicated one here on the board, but it could be anything. And then the second time limit is what happens after you close the switch and you wait a long period of time and then you measure the current in each branch, what value would you get? So let's go ahead and uh, solve this problem and see how you would treat both limiting cases. These are pretty easy problems, so it's important just to understand just a few concepts and you'll get them right all the time. All right, so here we have short time on the left-hand side and long time after right-hand side. For short time, the important property about inductors is that they resist changing current. That is Faraday's law. And as a result, oops, I'm about the right charge here, but what I really want to say is current. As a result, when you want to analyze a problem in the short time limit, what you do is you basically just get rid of the inductor and leave a space there. <laughs> if there's an open circuit here, there's basically no current that's going to flow in any branch that has an inductor. So no current here and no current in this branch. So that's an important point. And that makes these problems very, very easy, right? We have no current in any branch that had an inductor. So for this particular circuit, this becomes very, very simple. Because if we eliminated the two first branches, what are we left with? We're left with just one big loop that goes around here. And that becomes very, very easy to solve for the current. Now in the long time limit, it's also very easy. All you have to do is, after a long period of time, once you've reached steady state uh, current in each branch, basically the inductor no longer resists any change. And it basically acts just like a regular wire, just like the black wire that I drew here. So after a long period of time, we can basically replace our inductors, let me delete these ones here, and simply replace them just by regular wires. Just treat them as regular wires. And now we should also be, you know, this is also a very, very easy problem now. Because you can just apply your loop rules and just basically solve for the current in each of these branches. So after a long period of time, simply replace inductors with just wires. I mean, in principle, they are just wires, right? You've just wrapped a current or wrapped a wire around a coil. Okay. So there's no more resistance to change. No more resistance to changing current in those wires. All right. So now let's treat both of these cases and find the current in each branch for the short time and the long times. Okay, so let's do the short time since this one's much easier. So if I define the current I, you know, it goes from the positive. Again, there's no current flowing down any of those branches. They have basically infinite resistance. All right, there you have it. That's the single loop for the current. We call it I. Now you can apply Ohm's law to this. So apply the loop rule uh, in order to get an equation here. So you get plus 25 when we cross the battery. If I start here and I go around the clockwise direction, next thing I encounter is a 40 ohm resistor. And there's a current I flowing through it. So that's the voltage drop across that resistor. And the last one, again, it's the same current flowing the 15 ohm resistor. I could have simplified both of those using an equivalent resistor, but this problem is so simple that I don't really care too much this is simply 25 divided by 55. Now if I divide the top and the bottom by uh, 5, you get 5 over 11 amps. That's the current in the short period of time just after you close the switch uh, for this particular circuit. Again, 
no current measured in the middle branches, only current measured in the outer branch and current flowing through the battery. All right, for the long period of time, again, you just, um, the inductors provide no resistance to the changing current. I mean, there is no more changing current. Um, so they basically just act like regular wires. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna group all of those. I'm gonna first solve this uh, circuit, just replace everything with one equivalent resistor, but let me start with this one. Uh, all these three are in parallel, so you can do this like this. One over five plus one over 10 plus one over 15. Um, I'm running out of space here, so let me write it down here. If I put things on maybe 30, uh, the first one will be six over 30, plus three over 30, plus two over 30. Uh, at the end, we're gonna be left with uh, five plus six is 11 over 30. Okay, so they are equivalent of everything kind of in this dashed line is simply 30 over 11 ohms. Okay, and at the end, the total R equivalent um, of the entire network. Let me write total up here. Again, now I have a 40 ohm resistor that is in series with a, a 30 over 11. So you get 40 plus 30 over 11. Um, if I put things over 11, what is that, 440 over 11? plus 30 over 11. All right, at the end of the day, I think I get 470 over 11, if the algebra is correct here. Okay, so I've got, basically I've replaced the entire network here with one uh, equivalent resistance of 40 over 11. Uh, we should be able to now simply apply Ohm's law to find what the, what the current is um, through this outer branch over here. So let's do that. So I'm gonna call this simply the current I. It's the current I here flowing all the way up to this junction and then it splits. But let's start by solving that current I. So we have a 25 ohm, no, sorry, 25 volt battery that's connected to this effectively equivalent resistance here of 470 over 11, um, which equals to the current I. Uh, 25 times 11, 25 times 10 is 250. That should be 275 uh, divided by 470. And again, we can calculate that with our calculator. But that's the total current I in this uh, section over here. So now we could go ahead and find the voltage drop across. Uh, we can apply our loop rule now and find the current through each branch. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I've calculated that. Our equivalent was 42.7 ohms, and our final current was 0.585 uh, amps. What we're now gonna do is we wanna find the current in the branch CD, EF, and GH. In order to do that, the easiest way is simply to use our loop rule. And we're gonna start with the loop. We're gonna start at A and go around this loop, A, B, C, D. and apply uh, Kirchhoff's loop rules to this. So the first thing we encounter is a battery. So we get 25 volts. Now we get a drop across this resistance. We get a voltage drop equal to 40 uh, multiplied by 0 0.585. That was the current we just solved for. And now we get down to the five ohm resistor. We're gonna get a voltage drop. And the magnitude of the voltage drop is gonna be five multiplied by the current through that branch. Let me call it I1, and that's equal to zero. So we're gonna have a current, let's call it I1 going down this branch, I2 going down this branch, and I3 going down that last branch. Okay, so we have one equation here. The first equation, the only unknown is I1. So we can go ahead and solve for that. So I1, uh, simply going to be equal to 25 minus uh, 40 multiplied by 0 0.585 uh, divided by 5. Okay, 
Uh, at the end of the day, if I do the algebra correctly, let me plug this in the calculator. Minus plus 25 and divided by 5. All right, I think I get 0 0.32. Oops. That's our current I1. All right, for I2, we can repeat the same steps and you can just right away write our expression. We see what it's going to be now. The first two terms are exactly the same. So you get 25 minus the voltage drop across 40 ohm resistor. It's 585. And now it's going to be, instead of dividing by 5, we're going to be dividing by 10. Okay. So well, what I could do here is I can just multiply this by 5 and then divide it by 10. We should get 0 0.16. And in the last case, I3, again, first two terms are the same. 585. And now I'm going to be divided by 15. So here, if I multiply by 10 and divide by 15, I should get 0. Point, well, roughly 1, 1 amps. So there you go, now we have the current in each branch, and what you can do is you can actually add all of those up, see what you get. So zero point that, plus 0 0.16, plus 0 0.32. Uh, lo and behold, uh, we're gonna get the current I at the end, if you add all of those up. And again, there might be a little bit of error just due to rounding, but if you add up I1 plus I2 plus I3, that's basically a junction rule applied to junction C over here. You have to get the current I that we obtained uh, in the first part. All right, so let's just summarize here. So we've got uh, two time limits that we looked at. Here was our circuit. I'm gonna use black for the current I, which is in this outer branch, green for the current I1, red for I2, and purple for I3. These were the initial currents that we found. I1 and I2 were zero. And after a long period of time, these were the steady state currents in all the four branches of the circuit. So let's start with I. Let's make sure I got the right color. Okay, I started out at 0.455, written out on the graph. That was at the short time. And in the long time, it's 0.585. So in the long period of time, it eventually tends toward this value. That's what the current I does. It increases from 0.55 to 0.585. Uh, let's go ahead and do uh, I1 now. Uh, I1, I decided to do that one in green. I1 initially was zero, it's down here. And then at the end, I1 goes up to 0.32. Okay, and it's gonna do something like that. Well, what about I2? I2 started out at zero as well. It ends up at half. Ends up at half because the resistance is twice as big. That's I2. And the last one, I3. I3 started out here, 0.455. And I3 at the end ends up all the way down here. Okay, so that one actually goes down. So there you have it folks, there's the summary of uh, what's going on at the short time and the long time. Uh, if you liked the video, uh, please hit the like button. Um, if you have any questions, just leave a comment down below or send me an email. Thanks for watching.